Welcome back to the lab, welcome back to EE for everyone. Today we're going to pick up our amplifier series by walking through the schematic capture for this design. Now if you remember correctly, this is a dev kit. This isn't really meant to be a finished amplifier. This is meant to play around with the principles of a class AB amplifier. Give us a little tinker toy to play around and see if what we expect to happen really happens. We did this a long time ago in the class A amplifier that we did the common emitter amplifier. And there's still one of those here. There's another one of those here, but we're also doing the class AP. So let's dive in. Let's look at the schematic that we've captured. This will look very similar to our LT spice simulation, but there will be some key differences. There's the usual title blocks and nonsense. And the only thing that I really didn't like about our LT spice simulation is that of course we have an ideal voltage source. We're gonna be supplying this with our lab supplies which should have a fair bit of output bulk, like some bulk capacitance for this to lean on. But I didn't know how much that we, I don't know how much we'd want to have board side. And so now this isn't really ideal, but what I've done to deal with that is I just put an array of test points so we can get some through hole capacitors and bodge them on the board. Not exactly what I would call ideal, but It'll probably get the job done. It's just not going to be pretty or fun. So that's kind of what we did there. And we threw down some decoupling caps, some 0.1 microfarad 50 volt caps as well. Another thing that you can see that we've done is on the output side here, looking at uh, the, the output totem pole, the NPN and the PNP power transistors with the um, extra gain stage from the 3904 and 3906. Then we've got our biasing network, kind of this modified, partially temperature compensated one because I don't have a diode that perfectly matches the forward voltages for these transistors. Gulp lets me kind of fine tune the balance of current sharing, but still keep some of the temperature compensation. So yeah, we'll see what that turns out to be. Hopefully that's fine. And then we've got this grid of four resistors instead of two. That's meant to be 200 milliohm resistors in the design, but just to make sure that we've got enough headroom on power dissipation, we broke that up. And each of those is a 2512 resistor. So those are not small. Those are quite big. The output ultimately goes to a terminal block, which will just let us throw whatever we want, speaker wire, something else. Yeah, it should be just fine. Power resistor, scope probe, <laughs> yes. Look at the input side, we're using a mono plug with some test points thrown down so that if we want to hardwire something into the circuit, we can just add some leads or something. Uh, I don't know what we're going to use at first, but I might need to dig out a signal generator of some form. The biggest positive change that I think we've done is we've added a trim pot, a multi-turn trim pot in the biasing network that sets the steady state current through the totem pole, as well as a trim pot for the bias point that chooses the nominal output voltage. So basically, the smaller this resistance is, the lower VO will be normally, and the larger this is, the closer it'll be to V plus. So turning this on biases that, which turns that on which sets it to ground. Yeah. So the more this is on, the closer it gets to ground, which makes sense because it needs to have negative feedback. Okay. We walked through the logic. We got it. Basically, you tweak that trim pot and it will change VO. <laughs> you tweak that trim pot and it will change the nominal current through 3904 and 3906. When you adjust RV3, to adjust that nominal current, you'll need to adjust RV2 a little bit to like compensate for it, but those are the primary functions. You need to get them back in balance. So if you want to turn up the current through this totem pole, you can, that's fine. You can do that, but you might need to adjust that as well because you have some current flowing down through these and then back on through those. But check out the previous simulation videos where we're walking through the LT Spice Sims if you want to learn more about that. It's nothing too crazy. It's pretty much a textbook implementation. So 
I think that's about all we've got to say. I can't wait to get this in the lab and look at the frequency response. The LT Spice Sims are promising, but that's not a guarantee. So let's dive in. Let's put this in the lab. Let's get this in physical hardware. Let's test it in the lab and let's find out how well it works together. If nothing else, this will turn into an awesome tinker toy, which will let us learn what we need to learn about class AB amplifiers before we either build a higher power version, try something else, or hey, maybe try a different topology. Let's see. Let's just play around a little bit with amplifiers because that sounds like fun. Okay, that's all I've got for today. But if you like this video, let me know by hitting that like button, getting subscribed, or leaving a comment down below. Coming up next, we'll be walking through the layout for this design and then testing the hardware. I can't wait. A special thanks to our Patreon members and our YouTube channel members for supporting us directly. That really helps us out a lot. Thank you. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching it for everyone and thank you for staying till the end. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>